it appears we are live. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, fam. And I think I got a little bit of lag. Uh, let me know how the stream quality is. Got a, you, know, you guys can see the, the thumbnail of the video. I'm bullish and I've got reasons to be bullish. Um, and I'm going to dive into those, right? We're going to go ahead and dive into these reasons why I think BTC is bullish, what's going on with this retracement, and so forth. All right, I'm going to start off with the weekly chart. I do have it. Um, this is BLX. This is like going back in time. This is the uh, Brave New Coin. It's the Bitcoin index, and it, it's got a lot of a lot of data, right? It goes far back to 2010. Um, and I posted this chart to our VIPs. I actually shared it on Twitter and Facebook too on the way down. I said, you're going to see some type of bottom at 8,400. And this is really simple TA. This is the Bitcoin weekly chart with the uh, just Bollinger Bands on it, right? Um, and what we see is before, every time before we break out to new highs, we see this retrace back to the median, all right? Back to the median, back to the median, back to the median, back to the median. Um, and ironically, we got the same thing here, all right? So if we go in on like an intraday, uh, 240, oh, can't do it on this chart. So if we go in a, a four hour chart and we can get rid of the Bollinger Bands, we really don't use them unless it's like something like this. Um, but over here, right, and on this this fake bull flag, we had seen an up move. Uh, it was actually like a descending broadening wedge. It was definitely a bull trap, right? Um, it did take out hedges at ten thousand and thirty three, I believe. Yep, and I had a ten zero six six that did not fail uh, for this leg down. Um, now, no, is there another reason I'm bullish other than the um, the weekly chart, right? Now, we go back to this weekly chart as well. Let me go back to BLX since, since we're on several reasons why I'm bullish currently. So, um, when these corrections take place, all right, when these long-term corrections take place on Bitcoin and we see the market go through these two-year corrections and so forth, all right, and it breaks above the 23.6 uh, Fib, goes 38.2, um typically typically we're gonna want to get continuation right we rarely go above the uh, 23 we haven't right we've seen two of these connections we've never gone above the 23 and broke below it i actually spoke about this back here at 7k um when we started breaking off all right um usually when this happens and you go up we don't typically break below now um, since since we're on the topic of breaking below, what's the lowest I think BTC can go, um, and and yet remain bullish, right? Like where would be the ultimate buy the dip right now? The ultimate buy the dip right now, uh, and just going over like basic fibs, basic fibs, um, it's going to be the sixty one point eight, right? Um, which. Uh, we hit the 50 and it had a pretty good strong bounce, which was expected. Uh, it did signal that long on Phantom. I posted it on Friday. Price didn't get there until Sunday, yesterday. All right, so Friday, um, Bitcoin re entered Phantom. We had rejection. We had more rejection. I said, hey guys, I'm going to stop out my longs here because we'd have longs from this low. So we're gonna look for an entry at 8,400. It did go down at 83.96, right? And it tagged that line once, and then we had a wedge break. All right, so we had the wedge break um, right when we had this initial consolidation. I said, guys, I'm gonna close out most of my short, and I'm gonna ride this net long up to or my. Target was 89. I had a target at 91. 91 did not hit. Uh, and now we're kind of coming back down, right? We're coming back down on the 30. But ideally, where, how far can we dip, right? How far can we dip and remain bullish? I'm going to go ahead and draw that out right now. And I'm going to go over why I think that's the case. Uh, and first, let me see if you guys have questions, comments. 
commentary. Yo, what's up, Christopher Spencer? All right, looks like we got a pretty decent crowd on the on the Facebook tonight, which is awesome. You guys uh, say hi. So, um, in terms of BTC, I do think that the lowest we're gonna go is going to be that seventy nine eighty, right? Seventy nine eighty, seventy nine eighty one. It's gonna be the sixty one point retracement of this move. How reliable is that, right? Based on the tier correction we just went over. And based on all these previous moves, right, even breaking out of here, right, breaking out of 2019 lows, right, the lowest we went was 61.8. This one went down 78.6. We weren't quite ready to break, right? This is 61.8, 61.8, boom, big rally. And let's go to the daily. And once again, if you go back and all these moves that I just went over, right? These are all 61.8. So I'm just gonna remove all drawing tools, remove drawings. And I'm gonna go in with a fib retracement. I'm gonna fib swing low to swing high, right? Um, let's take this one, forget that big wake. That's a 61.8. Um, this is a 61.8, right? 61.8. Uh, the following move, this was 61.8, right? 61.8, 61.8. Uh, this was 61.8, right? This was 61.8 as well. So we always get that type of retracement. Now, 50% retracement would be very bullish, right? I haven't seen one so far. Um, and that's why it was important to take you know, precautions here at that 8,900 mark in case we get a deeper knife down. Hi Paris, Matt Pink, what's up? I see you on the fib, man. Facebook, not not Fibonacci. So once again, uh, if we do get a 61.8 retrace, this is a good bullish candle, right? We had a doji before it, and then we had bullish engulfing on the daily. We still consolidating below 89.34, so we might ping pong in this range, we might break down, but Definitely. I mean, I sent out a newsletter before the drop saying we're going to see a move down. I had um, I had 89 as my mark, right? But it broke lower, obviously. Um, and then I do believe final support on this run is going to be 7,900 to 8K. Just 61.8 retrace before clean continuation like we've seen, right? Now, if you're thinking, hey, what about coronavirus? What about the S&P? Traditional markets are crashing. Um, I, I'm gonna go over that, right? So for you guys that have been following me for a while, following CO, uh, I published this. Let's get it to look. I published this back in December, um, and I've been looking for this SMP retest, right? So if anybody thinks this this Corona shakeout was an anomaly, uh, it wasn't, right? Anytime the S&P, anytime any asset breaks above a significant FIB level, there's always a retest. And um, this chart demonstrates the three previous retests that we had seen on the S&P, right? And this was back in December, uh, December 20th. I'm like, hey, this thing's up 5% and it hasn't retested yet. And then to confirm that I, you know, we expecting this move, I sent this out on February 3rd. Uh, you guys that are subscribers, you know about this, 2-3, right? Um, and one of the highlights of the S&P, um, I alerted VIPs over here for the first short. I did not short again. I thought bulls would hold it up a little longer, but one of my, you know, one of our emails, and this is the last one that we put out before the crash about the S&P, that if you get a retest, VXX is going to be the trade for Q1, right? The SPY is in blow-off mode, it's very bullish, hasn't retested the 2.618 FIB level, right? Um, see chart one, which is a chart we're just looking at over here. So, um, let's look at the S&P and before we do that, I'm going to go back to these correlations. Every time the S&P retests one of these significant levels, um, it sets off BTC into the next bull run, right? I don't think the stock market flash crash dump of Corona that we saw last two weeks um, is the end of the world, right? I just think it's, I think it's definitely a retest, right? We saw 
a retest back in July. We saw of 2013, we saw one prior, and both of these set BTC in a bullish continuations. Um, the S&P just got out of a corrective phase, right? And it did another retest in 2017. And that retest also triggered another BTC bull run, right? That retest was November 7th. And then November 7th, BTC was kind of sideways before it started the climb. Um, I don't think it's the time, like, I don't think we're going to get a big bearish continuation out of the S&P. Um, out of the traditional stock market, even though Corona is not looking too promising, right? Um, but what do we see here? Look at these bullish engulfing candles. I think a lot of the bears got, or a lot of the bulls got shaken out. Um, everybody that was heavily leveraged. What we're gonna do is we're gonna draw these fibs and see if we got our retest that I published about um, before it quite happened, right? Like two months before before d-day dump day and we sure did right i mean i published on this in december uh week of december 23rd it went up a little bit chopped out the first time continued up and then boom and now what do we see uh we see bulls trying to reclaim they actually reclaimed the 2.618 feb um yeah that's just how markets work guys fibonacci levels get retested every time right here's a retest here's a retest here's three retests um, before we get bullish continuations. Typically when this happens, uh, when this one happened, it triggered this 2017 bull run. Uh, when this one happened, it triggered the 2012 and then 2013 continuation. All right, um, I have covered BTC, I've covered the S&P. Now, in terms of you know what I'm expecting for the next few days, I'm not playing, I'm not trading anything on the daily, but I did scale into VXX shorts. So what I did is I bought puts on VIX, um, and when I said in our in our email, the VXX is going to be if we get a retest, it's going to be the trade of Q1, right? So February second, February third. Um, third it was up here right now it's january february 3rd uh i was kind of getting people ready for this move and on spot right that's not even an option so third and you would have sat underwater for just a little bit before a 52 percent move right um not that's for just looking at things in a macro level and looking at that macro setup um that's another reason uh, i prepared everybody all the vip is still long um btc is 7900 right now if you look at like phantom um and, and some of our, our daily indicator intraday indicators on btc um phantom signal that long you had bullish continuation at the midline and now it's saying hedge. Um, I'm hedged. I, I want I want to see a pullback back down like 85, 86 for a continuation. I'd rather see the 50 hold than the 61.8, just because I, I don't want to have to close my longs and and then rebuy again. Like I'm tired of doing that. I'll check in on somebody else's questions. Correlation is not causation, aka hashtag Corona. You can say correlation does not mean causation, but there's no such thing as coincidence in markets. Like there's there's no way that I you know posted saying the VIX was going to be the trade because we're missing a retest and then Corona gifted it. It's called the invisible hand, right? Um, so you can say correlation does not mean causation, but I will say there is an invisible hand that tends to move these markets where they should go. Um, and you can say what you want, but you follow, read, there's a link to that medium publication. Um, and yeah, so it's definitely valid. Owen, um, responding to a YouTube comment. Now on the daily, what's going on with phantom, um, Things are looking interesting, right? I mean, if we do get uh, a continuation up from here, which is um, the midline, right? If we get any kind of like bullish action past last high, 
I'm not saying that's the case, but if we do get it, and we're looking for 11.7 um, for another short, right? We, we do have to break above the 38.2. More interestingly, another setup from the February 3rd email, and I send this on out to everybody that subscribed. This thing's free. So if you want to subscribe to it, click the link in the description. It was ETH BTC. Um, that two-year wedge. So I'm gonna go over ETH. You guys know I've been paying a lot more attention to ETH than BTC on margin. Um, and that's because we're playing the macro setup as well. Um, so ETH BTC, looking at it at the daily. Um, this was last break. This is these are the targets. It's above target four still. Um, and we're looking at a possible bull flag, right? Let me remove all drawing tools. All right, so we're looking at a potential bull flag on Ether or Bitcoin. Um, so does that mean Ether is still gonna be gaining more than BTC? I don't think this runs over, right? I mean, it's up 36% and it kind of took a break. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the Bittrex chart just because it has more data. And once again, we're looking at macro moves. I like looking at the most data. Um, after the have I don't, I don't do those kinds of projections, but we can go back to the BTC chart and I can show you um, some interesting data, right? I can show you some interesting data. So typically when we get an ETH, them, bottom setup right this one looks similar to here it looks similar to here I definitely broke above major rejection levels right so once I fib it are we still above uh, I mean it could be it should be is it it's definitely holding a key area right if it breaks below um, 249 I'd probably want to get out of this trade but this setup right really reminds me of this setup um, back here where we did get the similar consolidation all right I don't label these fibs but the ones that match in color are the same ones and we were literally right where we were sitting um back in in that 2016 i think it was like march 2016 january february 2016 on that ETH btc chart not in terms of price but in terms of extension um from the bottom formation right so i'm still looking at upwards volatility here and which is going to take me to the ETH usd chart um let's go to coinbase and remove drawings on this one i have a lot of alerts you guys can see all these uh dotted lines so on this setup right this based on fibs we're at the 38.2 right and last time we saw something like this happen i actually posted this chart uh, before we took the final dive right i said guys we want to see these 38.2s do their thing um, and, and hold up price action. We're seeing the exact same setup, right? Um, what, what is TA? TA is studying these repeating patterns, right? And um, we're seeing very much of a repeating pattern uh, in terms of how measurable it is. And we're still finding support above 38.2, uh, which is where we found it back in April of 2019. So if we get a bullish continuation out of ETH, you know, I'm targeting, this might sound stupid, right? But I am targeting 513. I still have my longs from 135 on here. Um, and I added here, so that's my March long, my June long is like in this zone. And uh, yeah, I'm still targeting another major swing back to btc to answer that having a question um i mean theoretically if ETH goes to 513 and if we are still bullish 
I'd want to see 18k get tested again, 18.5, right? Is that is that out of reach? I don't quite think so, right? And this hit is, is particularly valid, um, especially with this current placement. As as this top was forming, you know, for two days, because the price action did take two days, I'm like, why does this keep rejecting up here? And that's the 61.8 retracement of, of this like bearish retracement, right? So you have the 23, 36, or no, that 50, 30.2, 23, 30.2, the 50, the 61.8, right? And so um, bears defended that, right? So this is definitively the 61.8. We didn't even get a close above it. But, you know, based on that, I would be targeting, the reason I talk about placements, because if you go to the wicks instead of the candle, right, candle, wick, if you go to the wick, um, it, it barely, it barely didn't even get close to 61.8. And I did have an 1100 target, 11,000 target that never hit. And that's what made me adjust them after two days of struggling up there, because I didn't know what was pushing the chart down. Uh, and now that we have that, we know this is very much valid fit placement. Um, back to answer that question, I think you know sixteen nine would be would definitely be viable, uh, whether pre having, post having. If we go back to these cycles and these risk on markets, right? Every time there was a Bitcoin having and a quote unquote having pump. It correlated with a risk on cycle, right? Um, so, is it the pumps or the risk on scenarios that that cause BTC to move? That's that's what's um, you know. I'm not sure if it's the having or these retests, but the fact that they've happened, you know, in the same seasons, um, and this is way more measurable because we have an exact start date or an exact date of a retest. Um, and an exact move, uh, somebody feel free to, to time the halving in the acceleration of the BTC trend, and then uh, we can have a, a more intelligible conversation about the topic. Well, guys, um, smash that like button. I'm ready to take on altcoin requests, any requests really, um, Ether, Bitcoin, um, Bcash, you name it. Let's go over it, right? You guys have questions about charts, about TA, um, about various trade setups, let me know, I'll answer them. Interestingly here, RBI turned blue, right, in a flat line, I want to see what ETH's um, RBI look like on the daily, uh, let's turn phantom off, uh, let's do ETHUSD, on the Coinbase, on the daily. Yeah, these drawings, we haven't quite had the flat line yet, right? But there's a big divergence here. There's a big divergence here. Um, so we could be seeing an upward move. Check the Bcash BTC pair. I'm guessing that's just BCH instead of a BSV. BCH BTC uh, and I'm gonna go over the Bitrex chart just because there's a lot more data. Um so rarely trade Bcash, I don't trade Bcash, I don't trade Bcash. Correction there. Yeah. Phantoms daily looks good, except for RBI is showing a possible end, right? Um I'm seeing conflicting data. Let's go to the four hour. Um, look at that, right? I mean, Phantom gave you the top here and then it gave you bearish continuation. We should be shorting this on BitMEX, guys. Or at least long short on BitMEX. Um, you can kind of say there's maybe a wedge on here. I'm gonna call it a maybe. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it. Um, could continue up, right? But if we get another one of these red dots on Phantom's midline, another rejection, or a couple of them, then I'd expect liquidity to be down 
here, right? That uh, 0 0.032. Um, I'm just gonna measure this smooth. Should be a viable short. I wouldn't. I wouldn't short it from here. Let's pull up the um, the scanner. What are harmonics saying? Remove drawings. Um, that's invalid. Let me go into the sixty. All right, so we see a four point here that's definitely tradable. Uh, I'm gonna shut everything else off. Um, it hasn't quite hit target. It kind of did over here. It's at T1. So yeah, I don't have confidence in Bcash going up over BTC right now. Um, LTC, I did have a long that got stopped out. It was on margin. And I think I just hopped in it up too soon. I signaled it. Um, sort of my fault. Look at that, right? Look at that on the hourly. The scanner caught a good long. That's our XADCD scanner. Um, just turning on all the setups. The daily was looking really interesting. Um, it caught a couple of bottoms, it signaled a couple of tops too. Uh, let's zoom in, look at that. That's good price action. I should have shorted up here instead of tried longing down here. Um, but let's look at it. Let's look at the macro, right? Because macros right now are, are the way I'm trading this market. Um, I do believe we are cycling up. Um, daily RBI, right? Still open, still positive RB over here. Green's above red, K's above D. Um, signal line is down, right? We want this thing to turn around and go back up. We want it to lift the other two. Um, did this happen last run or not? So we could see this kind of move. Let's fib it, right? Let's fib it. I'm gonna pick this swing high. I'm gonna pick this swing low. Um, it looks like it's holding. Definitely hit a rejection area, right? I mean, you guys know um, total rejections on. And it broke down. How does this compare to last move? Oof. I actually signaled this one on LTC ETH because I saw something that was a little more tradable than the BTC chart. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and, and draw that out. Here's one of these moves, right, where we had rejection and then boom, strong continuation. So we might see this setup play out again. And the thing is, if ETH BTC is bullish and LTC BTC is bullish and LTC is going to turn around and kick ETH's butt, then we're likely going to see LTC BTC rally. I just can't identify the move on that chart, right? And sometimes that's not a bad thing. We just look for the next pair. And if one pair is rallying over the other and another one's gaining over pair two, then you're in the world of exponential returns. Um, and that's why crypto is so beautiful, right? And back here, right, um, a couple weeks ago, I was saying, hey, like this thing should continue up and we should at least get a 15% move. And I mean, we're getting a second attempt now. So if I start seeing bullish engulfing candles on OTC daily, right, another upwards move, um, I think this time around it's gonna rally, right? I can't, I can't see it on the BTC chart. Maybe I didn't have uh, the right coffee today. I did switch brands, but there's definitely a setup on this chart. And you know how many times has this setup played out? Did this one work? Nope. Um, there's one back here. 
Where is it? I had this fractal drawn like several times over and over and over. I think it was this one. Yeah, all right. Swing low, swing high. Swing low, swing high. Um, swing low, swing high, right? And then you get that turnaround, the turnaround, possible turnaround and continuation. All right. Um, you guys hit me with some more questions. I am still here. I am still yours. Oh, XRP EOS. I covered Litecoin. I'll, I'll cover Ripple. I'll do XRP USD. And uh, we'll stick with, we'll take this stamp. Is this a 50% retracement? Oh, it's below 61.8, man. I don't like it. Let's go with the candle bodies. It's still below 61.8. Um, don't like that. Don't like it. Now historically, before um before Ripple really rallies, we're gonna see like a heavy shakeout before a pump. On the BTC charts, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up. All right, that's just for now. Let me go ahead and apply Phantom. See how Phantom does. Nice. So I mean, if you're using Phantom, you had a one bad buy, then January with six, like. 16 days of, of buy zone, right? For a nice rally. That's just based on Phantom. Um, for a nice rally, 76%, man. Using this one indicator. Head and shoulders here, broke down. Um, still closing, right? Still closing below our midline. When that happens, Back to 19 cents, um, below the 61.8. So I, I'm starting to think back to 19 cents. Now I'll give it, I'll give it a deeper dive, right? Just so you're not like, man, you're a ripple bear, you're an asshole. Um, don't want that kind of rep. I'm trying to spot a big skin, right? A bigger harmonic that's in play. Not like a, a smaller formation. 240, 360. I mean, here's one, here's one. A four point should go back up. I don't know, let's look at uh, XRP BTC. That should give us a little more direction. Since Closing below that midline, right? And I did say usually there's that big shakeout before a rally on the BTC chart. Um, and here, Phantom's letting us know that there's likely a nice short setup. 26 to 22, is this something worth playing on margin right now? Yeah, you know, good 15% move down. That's very much likely. Um, daily. Here's the problem, right? I mean, we try to break above the midline, fail to stay above the midline. 0.19, right? I think this is a liquidity grab. I thought was looking to trade this on margin or actually like load up the boat i'll go ahead and and show you what i mean by a liquidity grab usually before this chart has ever rallied historically 
this always happens, right? Before every big major rally, you you get a dump. I don't I don't foresee Ripple going sideways before mooning. Um, Ripple is gonna dump and dump like it's just gonna it's gonna shake you out, man. It's shaking me out. I mean, there's a reason I remember these setups from back here. The reason I remember this and this. Uh, EOS, let's go EOS, USD, don't trade it, don't own it, full disclosure, this looks a little better than, than BTC just based, I mean, than, um, than XRP, right, Ripple was below the 61.8, this is above the 61.8, so that hints that there's likely a bullish continuation that's going to happen, Not quite as strong as BTC, right? The 50% did not hold at all. Um, not quite a wedge. I think EOS BTC was pinging my alerts the, uh, yesterday. And I just kept ignoring it. And there's definitely a phantom alert. So let me go ahead and pop that up. You can see my alert line. Is it the sixty dollars? Yeah, right. So I didn't I didn't want to trade it. I had alerts over here um, for a possible buy. Um, I just think my money's better off in something like ETH than, than EOS right now, so I didn't even want to deal with it. Hey Paris, um, we do, we do, but you're not gonna be able to get the biggest, like the real benefits, uh, just off Coinbase. I'm, I'm actually like, I don't like Coinbase, um, because a, it's only spot B. They're unless you're talking about Coinbase Pro, um, their fees are ridiculous, right? I think it's more of a novelty app, um. I would look in a VPN, right? And I'd look and get in some real exchanges. Uh, and, and yeah, and that's it's not legal advice, but I, I out in New York, you're very limited. And I just, I don't trade on Coinbase. I got off Coinbase two years ago. And they canceled their debit card and uh, yeah, I, I had no more reason to be on there. So, yeah, what's gonna happen with EOS? It is below our median, right? We do want to see below our midline. Um, next level up is forty two eighty one, and then liquidity is at forty six forty one. So these are two possibilities. Um, based on Phantom, let's do a harmonic scan, right? You're still look at that. I mean. So many formations ending here. We had the four point, turn that off. We had a 0 0.080, so we had a bullish Gartley. Uh, this thing's trading the harmonics really well, right? This thing's really, uh, it's three reversals back to back. One, two, three, possible fourth, and the target is just above Phantom's target, right? So let me go ahead and move that right here. 4303, the stop loss on the short would be a 40. Now that I might try, right? This setup I might try, the bear one. Let's go ahead and set an alert. Missed the bull, might as well play the bear, right? Um, because if BTC starts surging, it's gonna be a party. Uh, covered Ripple, EOS, Litecoin. You guys on Facebook, you've been awfully quiet. You don't mind smashing that like button? Uh, if you don't mind, uh, yeah, smash that like button, guys. If you're on YouTube, click that bell so you get, um, notification when I go live. Hey guys, going once, going twice. Any more altcoin suggestions? You get, you know, been on for forty minutes. This used to be called Power Hour, so you guys want to keep me on for another twenty? You gotta give me some good charts to look at. Uh, 
All right, looks like no love for me, no love for the charts. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. If you're out on Discord, click the link. Um, if you need these indicators, click the link. If you haven't read the uh, risk-con correlation, me calling the big short, click the link. If you want to get in touch with me, click the link to Discord. Um, few stops, right? Always be careful. And don't forget the big picture, right? These big market cycles, these, these big macro moves. Um, that we were in. Don't get caught in just the current direct move, right? Don't be like a perma bear. Um, don't be a perma bull. I actually got, I got ridiculed when I posted that weekly chart, right, on uh, on Twitter and on Trading View the week I did it. But now all these guys are just, they're just being super quiet. I haven't heard from them. So. Go back to the weekly. I'm just gonna head over to B band, show you guys the chart I'm talking about. The one I started the stream with, if you just tuned in. Um, this right here, guys, right? Like, you didn't look at the big picture. Let's look at the big picture one last time. Oh, I'm bullish. I'm gonna stretch this puppy out. Look at the big picture and once we come out of a correction and we get above the median, right? If we're gonna come back to the medium, one, we're gonna go back to the median before knocking out a higher high. That's just a shake. That's how bull markets work, right? Really steep legs down before bullish continuation. Um, so, and so not only do we break above the median, we hit the top band on a weekly, which is super bullish. Now we're pulling back. What happens after these pullbacks, right? Bullish continuations. And we might chop sideways for a bit. But, you know, I was telling guys in VIP that I'm more likely scaling in longs at swing lows and hedging the swing highs, keeping a hedge open. The lower we go, as long as it's above the 61.8, the more I'm gonna bid, right? The more I'm gonna try to grow the big futures position. Because if we do go to 16K, right, that's where the money is. You make more money long and then shorting, and I'm not saying don't short. I did signal the 10,033 top. Anyways, oh, we got we got some uh ah, fooled yeah. All right, let's do let's do these four charts and then we'll call it a, a night. So K and C BTC. No Kyber Network. Oof, look at that weekly. Man, that's pretty. That is a pretty chart. Once again, if you think the market's bearish, right? And why why are tokens doing this? Right? Another token, the one I, I signaled it, um, I'll hop back in here. Um, the one I signaled before this last break when it was at like 370 i'm like guys link is a buy at 370 and you guys thought i was crazy right but then if you look at link usd um 416 it was at 420 earlier today right when these tokens go but i mean if you think the market's bearish then why are some coins starting to rage out right um knc btc for finance my dude, this looks bullish. Um, it does. I don't know if this parabola is going to continue. I don't. Um, if it does, right? And this is these are my upwards targets. Gotta get rid of this one. Sorry, man. And then we got. All right, these are my next three targets, but it's got to clear that last high. In terms of like macro move, where is the 61.8? Right, if, if it does break that 1606 target, then the next exit would be 24.407, right? Um, best way to really trade this right now is do this favorite tracement of the last bear move, right? Um, you get above the um, 10,000, right? Above this 10,000, which is the 23.6 retracement of this big bear move. You definitely want to set your stop here and let it run, right? If we go all the way up to 24, definitely take some profits there. Um, phenomenal chart, man. Thank you, Mark. All right, cute. Let's um,
Definitely doesn't look like um, like Kyber. All right, starting a wedge. Let's measure it. How do we fib? Right, swing low to swing high. Above the sixty-one point eight. Are we gonna get you know likelihood of a bullish continuation? I'd say so. It's holding above. It's just gotta stay above. That's that's the key on these. Uh, moves. Let me add RBI. Is it ready to break up on the daily? Likely bottoming here on the daily, right? We've seen RBI turn blue. Usually when it does that, um, you're going to see volatility come in the next few days. When it does that at a swing low, at a possible 61.8, we get really bullish price action the next day. Some here, some here. Um, this potentially looks good. Show me Phantom. Yeah, now we're talking, right? Look at that. Holding up pretty well above this midline. I'd want to see, I do have an alert here at 2107. Definitely ignored it. It's because I just haven't had much faith in alts and I've been doing a lot, you know, pretty good trades on uh, on margin. I'm trying to find the setup for that long. There we go, it was a two hour phantom. It was long, short, and then broke above. Holding above the midlines. I'm gonna go ahead and set an alert for over a year just because it's trading well on the two hour phantom, which is 22, 21.89, right? If we visit a 21.89, I might buy this shakeout. I'm, I'm probably gonna signal the shakeout and do a small buy. All right, and I mimic. This looks bullish. I don't know if I trust a uh, token on just one exchange. Definitely a bull flag on this one. I'm not on hit BTC. I don't know anything about the fundamentals on this. Maybe Blender can fill me in. Uh, he's been crushing all coin calls. We signaled a couple yesterday already up and hitting targets. So, I mean, here, this looks like it's, you know, we got a support resistance flip, right? SR flip where we had resistance and now it's above. I like I can get another top of uh, some of these higher levels. Why do you always do this? Here we go. All right, so we're likely going to get a top of these upper levels. Um, uh, that heavier rejection target is going to be a 16877, right, which is a 61.8 of this move. Um, can this flag go all the way up there? Move indicators. I'd say so, man. That's a nice bull flag. It's a sad. I just can't. I can't trade this. All right, lumens. You guys wonder why I go to Bittrex charts, not Binance, because I want to see these big cycles. This thing's been on, on Bittrex a lot longer than it has been on Binance. They're just older, older charts. Um, Don't like this pullback to this previous level. I don't. Historically, Lumens correlates well with Ripple. Right, they tend to like rally together and sink together. It's definitely in no man's land on the 720 Phantom, even though RBI is pinging so many like conflicting signals here. Scary, scary shit. Oh, I'm staying away from movements. 
go back to the scanner and see if harmonics can pick up something. But unless you're like treating it on like harmonics or just in and out, in and out, I don't foresee a swing in the near future. Definitely nothing ending here. Three day, weekly. Yeah, I mean that weekly setup for a butterfly, sorry, for a, a 272, it's a crab, did not play out. All right. Three day. Yeah, I'm just using the scanner, trying to pick something up. Can't get, can't get a signal. All right, guys, thank you all for tuning in. What is BTC doing? Thank you all for tuning into the stream. This is amazing. Um, thank you for your participation. Once again, smash that like button, click subscribe, tag your friend, show it to your mom, share the love. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next stream. If you have any questions, click the link, join us in Discord. Thank you.